And on a sad note, we lost a giant uh, in the death of Mr. Wrigley. Well, a fellow who had I've known all my life, he was had been very kind to me over a great many years. He started me really. He gave me my first job, a full time job in the in the baseball business with the Cubs, and kind of nurtured my career and. Uh, he really was a remarkable man. To me, Harry, he was the last of uh, the true sportsmen. Uh, and and he was a man of tremendous integrity. I guess if I uh, could think of a single word or would think of a single word to describe him best, was honorable. He was an honorable man. He was forthright. Don't ask a question if you didn't want to get a, an honest answer. He was uh, courageous. He, no, no one could intimidate him, as evidenced by the Madlock situation, or not having lights and a myriad of other things. And uh, baseball and the city of Chicago miss him terribly. Bill, I, I, it comes down now. You're the last one left who gives a dar darn about the uh, about the fan. Uh, Mr. Wrigley, uh, he ran his operation with the comfort of the fan at, uh, in mind. And, of course, this has been your stock and trade. Now uh, you're the only one left to do that. Well, I think I probably uh, learned that uh, working for him at uh, Wrigley Field. He's the only one I know who, would, who was not only interested in the fan, but would do something practical about it that seemed impractical at the time. Uh, he reduced the capacity 15 to 20 percent uh, the box seat section because he wanted to put in a wider more comfortable chair he turned the corners of the stands so that the fans sitting out there would be looking at the diamond rather than at the outfield the lost capacity again so he was perfectly willing to to uh, adopt uh, a program a policy and then he was willing to pursue it to to regardless of the cost. He was do you, do, you think, do you think he anticipated uh, maybe some of the changes in society when he refused to put lights in and and insisted on playing only day baseball at Wrigley Field? Well, he was really... Uh, I don't know whether that happens to be true or not. I know that I was unsuccessful for several years in trying to convince him to put lights in. Uh, but he often anticipated things. He was the first one... Uh, to, to recognize that the reserve clause was going to need some adjustment. As early as 1942, he had Paul Harper, his attorney, start drawing up a different type of contract to be used in the All-American Girls Softball League, where he would have a chance to experiment with it. And he anticipated a great many things. Uh, it, it, uh, it, this is... Uh, sad and strange not to think of, of him uh, up on the north side. You know, it's, uh, uh, it does prove, too, you know, that uh, uh, baseball is, uh, is a game for, uh, if the right kind of wealthy people own teams, it, it uh, rebounds to the benefit of everybody. Well, of course, he didn't uh, have to worry about his, his ego. He wasn't on an ego trip. He was a very, uh, really shy man, a private man. And the, the uh, interesting thing about him, uh, one of the big influences on my, on my life, I guess, uh, was a little sign he had in, uh, in his office. What was that? It said, success comes in cans, and had pictures of cans, failure in cans. And uh, he was a fellow who was willing to try something. Uh, I, I, uh, I think that... Uh, that if you could find, and you can't, but if you could find uh, some more Phil Wrigley's to operate ball clubs, so we would be all a lot better off. Now, don't misunderstand me. We had lots of, uh, we didn't see eye to eye on a great many things. Our philosophy of, of operations was, in many areas, completely different. And yet, uh, no one could ever question the fact that what he was doing was what he thought was best for the game and he felt that uh, I believe although he never said this but it was just my impression uh, that his father left him the ball club uh, not a part of the Wrigley estate but an outright request and I believe that he looked on it as tantamount to uh, a, a request for him to continue to operate it 
and to continue to operate as, as successful as he could. I think probably the, the the saddest thing about his baseball operation was the fact that he never won a world championship. He did so want to and came so close. And uh, he really was a very remarkable man, a very nice man. Bill, uh, we could talk for hours about Mr. Wrigley. I'm sure we only have a couple more minutes here. And I do want to talk about your ball club for just a moment. Here it is, opening day. You must have been in touch with the man upstairs and reminded him what he owed you because he gave you a beautiful day. Yes, it is a lovely day. And now we can play just as well. You know, uh, it, it, uh, the ball club is a lot better, as you know, Harry, than most people think. It, uh, we have a, a little better pitching, not quite good enough. And that's why we didn't move the fences in, because we were afraid that there would be more shots hit out by the opposition than we might be able to muster. Uh, offensively, we're considerably better, and I think that defensively in the outfield we will improve. Uh, we have made a couple of, of unfortunate plays uh, so far this year, but... We are getting overall better, and I think it's going to be an extremely interesting club. I don't think there's going to be any doubt about the fact it's going to be an interesting, extremely interesting year. You see the Yankees away, losing three out of their first four. Cincinnati, which is supposed to run away and hide, they're having trouble winning at the beginning of the season. Uh, Bill coming into the ballpark, the fans are coming in in droves, and uh, the spirit of the fan... Uh, I don't know whether just because it's such a beautiful day, but whether it's uh, maybe even the hardcore White Sox fan who's just waiting for you to give them something to really cheer about. Well, I can assure you one thing. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, we've made a lot of changes. The, the, the ball club doesn't bear much resemblance to the one we started with a year ago. Uh, we think that we're going to make it more interesting because we have... We have more power, and, and uh, we're going to get more bases, and we won't tie the only record we established last year, which was for most men left on second and third with no uh, outs or one out. Uh, we think that we're going to generate an offense, and now if we can just find the pitching to, to hold the others down. You know, you've acquired a couple of guys. Um, uh, Richie Zisk, of course, stands out. And, Bill, I hope you get him signed because I think he's the kind of a guy you build a ball club around. He has great leadership qualities and, and quite a young man. Uh, and he's got to help you. Well, quite obviously, we wouldn't have given up two pitchers if we didn't think he was going to help us. And uh, uh, we have a couple of other ones. Uh, Eric Soderholm, who has played well. That's your bargain basement baby, huh? Yes, he's one of our four. And uh, Steve Stone pitched a very credible ball game the other day. He deserved a much better fate than than, uh, than losing to the Blue Jays. And you haven't mentioned another one of your favorites, that the Bannister, who's played just absolutely sensationally. Well, he, he is going to, in my opinion, make uh, the fans soon forget Bucky Dent. He is... He is is exciting to watch and, and he runs and he likes to play knows how to play and then of course we have a fellow back in the woods sitting in the wings Kevin Bell who can play a little short stuff also yeah, I, I wondered if you sent word down the minor leagues to uh, have Kevin start working at some other position now that Bannister has played so well well I, I happen to believe that Kevin Bell could play any position I think he could play center field, right field, left field, or any infield position and play it well. He's just one of those young men who has uh, intuitively an idea of how to play the game. Bill, the very best of luck. I hope it's a real great season. And if this weather is uh, any arbinger of things that come, they have to be real good. And uh, thanks so much for being our guest. As a small token of our appreciation, the Zenith AM FM radio, which operates on AC and DC and features instant weather reports. At Zenith, the quality goes in before the name goes on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Harry. Let's have some fun. All right. Bill Beck has been our guest. It'll be Rick Wise pitching for the Boston Red Sox, Ken Brett for the Chicago White Sox, Harry Carey down on the field. We'll see you with a play-by-play -play a little bit later on. So long, everybody. If you can't fly continental, you might as well not fly. WMAQ. Your radio station brings you Chicago White Sox baseball. Jimmy Pierce.
Ingersoll with Harry Carey and Mary Shane. Chicago White Sox baseball brought to you today by Chevrolet Trucks. Trucks that are built to stay tough by Champion Spark Plug Company, who reminds you that there are a free White Sox baseball schedule at your local Champion Auto Parts store. By Stroh's Beer, for more than 200 years, real beer lovers know that it's Stroh's. And by Zenith Corporation, the one with the Color Century Automatic Picture Control System Electronic Video Guard Tuning. What a day for Major League Baseball. As you can hear in the background, there's a good crowd on hand already. Looks like we might have about 25 or 30,000 people here. As I look out on the field, all the young people who are performing dressed to kill, they really are enjoying themselves. The band's doing a fine job. And the starting lineups for today's game, for the visiting Red Sox, it'll be Rick Burleson at shortstop. Burleson at shortstop. At second base, Doug Griffin. Designated hitter, Jim Rice. First base, George Scott. In left field, the veteran Carl Yastrzemski. In center field, a new position for this young man, Dwight Evans, will be playing center field instead of right field. Lynn still bothered with a bad ankle. They have it in a cast, and it'll be about another week before they take it out. Butch Hobson, rookie at third base. He played at Rhode Island last year. Butch Hobson. Catching him place of Fisk today will be Bob Montgomery. Fisk was hurt in a rundown when he was tagged hard by the second baseman for the Cleveland Indians and hurt his neck. Bernie Carbo will be in right field. Carbo came over from Milwaukee in the winter. Pitching the veteran Rick Wise. Wise played with Philadelphia, St. Louis, and Boston last year with a total record of 143 wins and 131 losses. He was 14 and 11 last year. They're announcing the lineups for the Red Sox and the players are coming out right now. Certainly a beautiful day. The, the ballpark is in excellent shape. Gene Bossard has got the outfield and infield grass just beautiful. It's a player's delight. I was talking to Jim Spencer before the game and he said he'd much rather play on the AstroTurf because there's no bad hops. For the home club, Ralph Garr will be in left field. At second base will be Alan Bannister. At second base, George Orta, due to break loose any time. Playing in right field, Richie Zisk. And now they'll introduce the White Sox. Jim Spencer will be at first base. The designated hitter will be Oscar Gamble. Gamble got his first home run Sunday against Garvin. Chet Lemon in center field still looking for his first base hit. The young man will certainly feel much better when he can get that base hit, whether it's a bloop or a beat out of bunt. A change in the lineup. Brian Downing was scheduled to start, but Jim Essien will play in his place. We haven't had a report on whether Downing is hurt or not. On the mound, left-hander George Brett. George is 0 for 1, pitched three innings against Toronto, and his ERA is rather high. He had a 4-1 to one lead but couldn't hold it. On, behind the plate, Springstad will be behind the plate. At first base, the Tegio. At second base, the umpire will be Barnett. And at third base, it will be Evans. And as I look down at the field, you can't see a prettier sight than to watch these... White Sox come out in their white and blue uniforms, and many of the players around the league have asked these boys if they feel pretty good. They say they're very comfortable, the most comfortable uniforms you can wear. Lemon now comes running out. There's photographers all over the field taking pictures. And I can remember playing here not too long ago on opening day when the snow was coming down and uh, just a feeling that you hope you call the game like it was in Toronto on opening day when you look out in the outfield and you saw snow that you could ride on, but yet the game was played. And here we are here in 80 degrees weather. Now the whole ball club comes out along with Minnie Minoso and Bobby Knopp and Larry Doby and the coaches. So we'll pause here for a message, and we'll be right back for the play of the game. That melody you hear says that pleasure's near. From one beer lover to another strolls. So play that friendly sound, have that great taste around. Real beer lovers know. Twilight, love gleaming 
bright and bright star through the barrel lit by all the rest as we walk words of gallant these dreams tomorrow. He's at the basketball game in Portland. The Chicago Bulls start the series in Portland. Well, I don't, I don't have to tell you what that is. That's my, my watch. They're throwing those styrofoam balls all over the field. I knew this was going to happen. I just knew it. Here they come, boy. It will really create a mess out there for a while, but the ground crew is going out now to pick it up, and the players are trying to help. Certainly a nice momentum for anybody to take home instead of throwing out on the field. Boston Red Sox are rolling two on the season. They lost their first two games to Cleveland. They were bombed 19-6 to when Cleveland, when the score was 3-3, three to -three, came up with 13 runs in the eighth inning. Without a home run, there was not one home run and hit in that ball game, which is very unusual. And talking with the Red Sox manager Zimmer, I I said you can't tell me that there weren't a few bloops hit. He said, well, House gave up five hits and five runs, and three of them were bloop hits, and a couple of errors mixed in. So it reminds me of 1953 when I was playing with the Red Sox and we scored 17 runs in the seventh inning to set a record against the Detroit Tigers. Gene Stevens had three for three, which is a record that still stands for one inning. I had two for two, and then they pitched it to Rilla for me, and he got a single. So everybody juiced up their batting average in that ball game. In the East, Toronto is off to a flying start. They won again last night, beating Detroit five to two. Cleveland is two and one. Detroit is 0 and four. We are one and two, and we're going to score some runs. Our lineup is full of hitters that can hit the ball out of the ballpark. They can bunt. They can hit and run. Right now, we're we're hoping for the pitching to get better. Ken Brett will pitch today. Ken, who's got a good fastball, at times has trouble getting the ball over, and when he gets behind, that's when they get their base hits. He struck out. Now they're throwing those balls out in the field again as the bands march off the field. The first ball will be thrown out by Mayor Bolandnik and Mrs. Daly. Mrs. Daly has sons Richard, Senator Richard Daly, Michael Daly, John Daly, and Bill Daly. All sons and a grandson, Bill Jr., are here. The bands that are here from the city of Chicago it took part in the pregame ceremonies. Lane Tech High School Marching Band, representing the North Side. The John E. Kennedy, John F. Kennedy High School, representing the West Side. And the Chicago Vocational High School Band, representing the South Side. 
And if you heard the national anthem, it was sung by Ella Pinnell, a registered nurse who works for the Chicago Board of Health. She was an understudy to the late Mahala Jackson, and she did a fine job. And they're still taking those styrofoam balls off the field. The players are having fun throwing them back up in the stands. There'll be no fence in center field this year again. Bill Beck was saying on the pregame show with Harry Carey that he doesn't feel he has enough pitching right now to put that fence out there. And they hope with Lemon in center field with his great speed will catch up to many of the balls that will be hit deep. Enjoy seeing the outfield track leveled off in the last couple of years. Coming in here to play was very dangerous. They had an incline and there was no underground eating facilities out there and you hit that hard wall if you stumbled. And this is one ballpark I hated to play shallow being a center fielder and liking to play shallow. I played deeper for most hitters unless he was a guy like Nellie Fox who was a spray hitter and Nellie an awfully tough and great hitter and was very sorry when Nelly died because he's one of the great players of our day and one of the great bunters of all times and when you see some of these youngsters today not mastering the bunt especially when they're small and not power hitters you just wish they could have seen Nelly and how much money he made doing it they're still cleaning off the field got 12 runs on 13 hits Bernard had a home run, and R. R. Jones had a home run for Seattle. Heisel had his second home run. Seattle, a pesty ball club, but they're going to have spotty pitching. They they drafted well. The umpires are coming out now with Bob Lemon and Carl Ustrzemski, the captain of the Red Sox, will come out and go over the ground rules. Talking with the umpires in Toronto, they say it's the easiest ballpark for ground rules that they'll find in the American League. And this reason is that it's 330 down each line, 370 to the alley and 4 cent to the center field. And there's not many obstacles. There wasn't any tarpaulin in the way. But they will talk about the tarpaulin here beyond first base. If the ball goes in there, it's an automatic extra base. And the pitchers warm up. Th Mary Shane, what were you saying? I would say that this is a fantastic opening day. Oh, it's I fantastic. Think this, I, I tell you, who on earth would think of this with Bill Beck to have all these balls come out? This is just super. I'm having such a great time. Would you tell me what that that cart that's dragging the infield is? It's a, It looks like a locomotive, and it's got all sorts of gimmicks on it that are entertaining, all colors. It, it does have the locomotive front, wouldn't you say, Mary? Yeah, I tell you, it's super looking. My little boy should be here to see it, and all of you folks should be here to see it. In fact, if you're driving around without anything to do right now, get yourself over to Comiskey Park. There's still a few seats available. I uh, have noticed the ground crew is everywhere. They've got the water truck out in center field. I call it a water truck that dampens the track before the game. And, Along the way, they pick up any obstacles, but with all those balls, and I would say there was about 5,000 or 10,000 thrown out in the field, they've now got it all cleaned, and my congratulations to the ground crew, Gene Bosner and his team, and of course, Gene's dad was a very dear friend of mine in Cleveland who used to fix the third baseline for me. He tilted a little bit, so when I bunted down the third baseline, I could get a base hit here or there. We played pinochle all the time, and uh, his sons were trained well, and... I think that, uh, as I said before, and being repetitious, it's a tribute to look out and see how great this field is and thinking of how bad a winter they had here in Chicago. Field and defensively now, at first base you've got Jim Spencer, at second base George Orta, Alan Bannister, a sensational shortstop who's played nothing but outstanding baseball at shortstop. At third base, Eric Soderholm. Showing no signs of a leg injury that kept him out of the season in 1976. In left field, Ralph Gar. In center field, Chet Lemon, a young man who I'm really pulling for to get himself a base hit. You'll find it'll improve his fielding. It'll help him tremendously uh, up at the plate. Any way at all, if he could bloop one somewhere, he would be very happy. 
I know that Chet Lemon is hoping for that hit, and it would be great if it would come on opening day in Chicago. In right field, my kind of ball player, a guy that's come to play with all the tools, except maybe he doesn't have that speed that most outfielders have, Richie Zisk, but has the knowledge of how to play the hitter, sure hands, a better than average arm as he showed Toronto when he almost threw a runner off from the right field corner on a close play at second base. And behind the plate in place of uh, Brian Downey is Jim Essien. And here comes the, the marching band and their mothers and their fathers. And I'll tell you one thing, between the organ in my ear, I can see why Harry hollers and yells. It's pretty loud up here, folks. I thought it was because he loved the game. It's hard not to yell. It's really, it's really a lot of noise going on around here. On the mound, it's Ken Brett. Brett 0-1, pitched three innings, his first outing. Got the side out, struck out oh, three or four men the first two innings, but then when he had a lead of four to one, he couldn't hold it. Barrios came in and he scored four runs. Leading, leading things off for the Red Sox, Rick Burleson. If that organ don't stop, I'll put a hole in it. They don't know that you're serious. I, I know you. The you're organ belongs at the zoo. It stopped, Jim. They heard you. Boy, I want to tell you. I'm sweating as it is. I think I'm playing already. I'm hoping my tie. Is this harder than playing? <laughs> now they all want Harry. My name is Tim. They're not what saying Harry. They're saying Mary. There must be at least 25,000. It'll take me a while to get an idea out against the crowd. Burleson, a real pesty hitter, will hit the ball all over. Two strikes, he'll hit it to right field. Here's the pitch. There's a ground ball foul as Pesky had to jump away from it. He's a real good hitter. He covers the plate. He's not off to a very good start. He's hitting 111. Last year he hit 291 for a shortstop and hit seven home runs. So you see, he's a very good hitter. He's a kind of a complete ball player. And that's why he's making the $150,000. You know, no offense to Bucky Dent, but take a look at those credentials. And Bucky said that he should be getting what Burleson gets. Kind of makes me wonder a little bit when a guy hits 245 and 255. There's a pitch inside. You know, you mentioned that Rick Burleson is having a kind of a rough beginning. The whole uh, Boston team is having a rough beginning. They haven't won a game yet. That's right. And there's a breaking ball on the outside corner. Strike two. One ball and two strikes. We're in the top of the first. No score. Opening day, 1977 for the White Sox. And we're playing the Boston Red Sox. Brett shakes off a sign. He kicks that front foot and delivers. There's a line drive right field base hit. And on that two-strike pitch, he lines it in the right field. Talk about predictions. That's exactly what you said he was going to do. Well, you know, I'm not really predicting, but I, I've noticed him over the last few years that that's the way he likes to go. And you can play him a lot shallower because he won't hit it over your head out there. Doug Griffin, Sky Platoons, at second base. He looks down at a sign from Eddie Yost. I took more base hits away from me than my mother. Eddie Yost played for the Washington Centers. At the belt now is Brett. There's a ground ball out towards short. Bannister flips over to order. That should be a double play and it is. An easy double play. Six to four to three. As Sally Warner leads the cheers. I haven't got enough noise around here, but I got the boss back there. Makes it feel secure, doesn't it? That's right. Burleson starts things off with a single, and then on the first pitch, Doug Griffin hits a ground ball to short for a double play. Jim, you talk about your kind of player, and here's my kind of player, Jim Rice. I guess he's everyone's kind of player. He Not was... really my kind of player, because he can't field. Well, just as I was saying, I guess he's everybody's kind of fielder except Jim Pierce. So there's a breaking ball low, ball one. He's, here's the guy. Why do you think he's being the designated hitter when they got to put Evans in center field? Here's, so the, here's the guy that Hank Aaron said is the one guy who has a chance of beating him and, and uh, beating his home run that, record. That's possible. The one ball pitch. Ground ball out the third on one short hop. And Soderholm fires the first. Goal. It's 5-3. to three. And the Red Sox don't score. And the score after a half inning of play is the White Sox nothing. The Red Sox nothing. Flying to London. Then don't miss the seven wonders of... It's White Sox baseball for 1977. I'm Jimmy Pearsall, along with Mary Shane and Harry Carey. On the mound for the Red Sox, Rick Wise, big right-handed pitcher, stands about six feet three, weighs 210 pounds. 
but a record of 14 and 10 last year. Behind the plate, Bob Montgomery. He's replacing Carl Fisk, who in a rundown with the Cleveland second baseman hurt his neck. Defensively, he'll be the boomer at first. One of Mary Shane's favorite players. You got it. It's a you good player. <laughs> at second base, Doug Griffin. At shortstop, Rick Burleson. Third base, Butch Hobson. In left field, Carl Yastrzemski, one of the best defensive and offensive players in the history of the game. He's got a great arm, charges the ball as well as any outfielder I ever saw. He can throw him out from that right field corner, even at the age of 37 years old. In center field, a young man that I was told is having his difficulties moving from right to center, Dwight Evans. I couldn't believe this because this young man is a fine defensive player, but never playing out there before, he's having his problems. In right field, <laughs> the flake, Bernie Carbo, as Mary would say, I wouldn't call anybody that, Mary, and you better not call me that either. You said I could call you a handsome flake. Huh? That's right. <laughs> right. And you are. Here's Ralph Gar. Ralph Gar, off to a good start, hitting 357, looking for his first RBI, and several times with men on base, he hit some shots. He had the bases loaded when we needed a couple of runs and hit a shot right back at the pitcher, and he said, oops, here, I got it. Real close over by the line is Hobson looking for any kind of a half swing or a bunt. Outfield straight away. There's a pitch lined off foul out of play up on the roof to the left side. Coaching at first base, Minnie Minoso, who played many, many games in this ballpark. I used to get tired of watching him and Rivera dive into the bases head first, especially Rivera diving into home plate. My face used to ache. Bobby Knopp at third. Bottom of the first inning, no score. Wise ready, the big right-hander kicks. Fastball inside. It's a perfect view up here from our vantage point of seeing the pitch and seeing where the outfielders are playing. There's a pretty good hole in left center field. The 1-1 pitch. Breaking ball hit. Left field for a base hit. Ralph well, Card gets that breaking ball and just flips it into left field as Hobson playing in. But you get by him for a base hit. Well, that's the way to start, Jim. Started out with a base hit. You know, Begin the he's game. got a magic wand. Everybody wants him to get RBIs, take pitches, and walk. I like to see him swing. I, I just got to believe that he can help this ball club. Alan Bannister, shortstop, hitting 273, a couple of RBIs, and one big RBI in that second game of the series in Toronto. At the belt, Wise, the lead is Gar. There's a line drive foul to the right side. As Bannister trying to hit and run through that big hole between first and second, fouls it off. Jim, I understand Alan Bannister looked very good in the series in Toronto. I wasn't there, of course, but everyone said he was really playing the position well and, and coming through when he needed to. Sensational balls down the line on foul balls, making catches. One error on a slow roller that he couldn't get his spikes caught. He got it in that astroturf. Has to throw over to first base, guard back easily. One strike. White Sox opening up. Good crowd on hand. Could be 30,000. On deck, George Orta. Big hole between first and second. Bannister looking to keep out of a double play right now. There's the pitch, and he tries the button, holds up as the pitch is high and inside. One ball and one strike. Texas Rangers off to quite a start. A 4 and 0 is they took three from Baltimore and then won an extra innings last night. The Kansas City Royals also up to a great start. They've You're won right. four in a row. One and one now as Wise takes a stretch and fires back to first base. And oh. interestingly enough, the New York Yankees, the million dollar club, they're not off to such a Six great million start. Dollar lineup. That's a lineup, not the club. The club must be worth fifteen million. At the belt now, and a 1-1 pitch from Wise, he takes his time. There goes the runner. There's a pitch swing. Hit off the fist. Hobson can't make a play to first base. And the shortstop goes over to third to make sure the runner doesn't advance. On the hit and run, a hard fastball that jams Bannister as he's trying to go to right field. But he got a piece of it and got the runner over. That's the way to get the job done. That's what you call hidden talents. It doesn't show up in the scoreboard. Yeah, that's the kind of 
kind of thing that, that real fans and ball players know. They understand that kind of thing. George Orta. Hitting the ball hard. But only hitting 0-9 runs. Got an RBI. Playing real well at second base. Garwood is lead at second. Wise thinks he's stretch and delivered. There's a fastball. Hits the outside corner. Strike one. And Orta didn't like it at all. Big hole between third and short. Burleson over towards the bag. Left center field is pretty open. A few steps towards right is Evans in center field. 352 down each line. 375 in the gap. Wise looks back at second. He kicks. There's a line drive down the left field line. That's going into extra bases. Carroll score easy. Orta will slot it into second base. The Shifty takes and fires into third base. down the left field line for a double. You know, Jim, when you look at this lineup, you see people like Ralph Gar and George Orton and Richie Dick. It's obvious that the team is going to score a lot of runs. If the pitching holds up, the runs are going to be there. Yeah. He's got talent. Hit any hitter that hits the ball all over and stays in against left-handed hitter pitchers like Orton does, he's going to get his hit. You know, I finally learned how to keep the score, man. This big guy had a great spring. Hit over 300, a couple of home runs. Last year hit 289 with 17 home runs and 89 RBIs. Still face wise as he looks back at second. Breaking ball inside. One ball. This with good power all over. Hit a home run in center field against Toronto. And that ball was just taken off. Couldn't believe these hitters hitting the ball so hard with the weather like it was. This now at the end of the bat. He crosses a little bit. There's a pitch hit to the right side and foul as it goes in the stands in the upper deck. One ball and one strike. White Sox jump out to a lead now. One out. Bannister getting the job done. After Gar single on the hit and run, mass that runner and we score a run, but... Florida's base hit would have scored everybody in the park if they were on. Infield deep. Round towards third. Big hole in left center field. Wise. Takes his time. Looks back at second base. Griffin now goes back to the position. He jams him. Fly ball to the right side. Scott shading his eyes with his hand. Takes it. For round number two. This trying to hit that ball to the right side was overpowered with a fastball just like Bannister was. And his bread and butter pitch wise is his fastball. I thought it was a breaking ball until I talked to Al Jackson, the pitching coach, and he says it's his fastball. I was just going to ask you that very question. I talked with Don Zimmer before the game, and he said uh, he's still pretty overpowering. He said when he dives with stuff, he can really bring that fastball and, and overpower the hitters. That's right. And the day like today, too, who's plenty loose? He's not afraid to reach back and do a muscle or anything. White Sox with a runner at second. Order with a double. Jim Spencer to hit it now. Left-hander. Hit 285 in the spring. A couple of home runs. Hit 14 home runs last year. Holds the bat down at the end. Close stance. There's the pitch. Swung on. A bad pitch, too. Spencer. In a little hurry right there. And sometimes on opening day at home, players will get a little anxious. You can tell a nervous type guy, and Jim is that kind of a guy. He's a keyed up individual who wants to be good and sometimes will chase a bad pitch, but he's gotten stronger physically since I played with him in California. What one strike, you? bottom of the first, White Sox leading one nothing, two outs. Burleson behind the runner now. There's a fastball outside. What about you, Jim? Was opening day always a thrill for you? Was it always especially exciting to open? Oh, yeah. I, I, you know, church in the morning, run to the park, uh, walk. You know, like he's, I remember opening up in Philadelphia for my first opening and Bobby Shands pitching. And God, all I can think of Bobby Shands, you know, really, really exciting. I guess the adrenaline really flows oh, out yeah. those days. It's flowing on me right now. <laughs> one ball and one strike. Rick Wise on the mound. He's down by a run now. Order with a good lead. Spencer to hit a ground ball towards first. Scott will shake wise away as he steps on the bag for unassisted. Not before the White Sox come up with a run on a couple of base hits. Nowhere they leave a runner on base. And the score after one full inning of play, the White Sox won, the Red Sox nothing. Why 
why Zenith Chroma Color 2 should be your next color TV is Zenith Space Command 1000 with instant zoom close-up. It's an exclusive Zenith feature that zooms you into the action. Just press the zoom button on the remote control and the zoom picture is 50% larger. You get an instant close-up. It's available on selected 19 and 25-inch diagonal Zenith Chroma Color 2 models. Stop in at your Zenith dealer for a demonstration and zoom into action. We got something for everyone. with Harry Carey and Mary Shane. The White Sox jump out to a lead on a double by order. Ken Britt on the mound. He'll face George Scott, Carl Yastrzemski, and Dwight Evans to start things off in a second. The Boomer. This big guy has had some career. The Red Sox led the American League in home runs with 134 home runs last year. The Boomer in the last seven or eight years has averaged anywhere from 18 to 40. So he's got good power. To all fields, too. They try to pitch him low and then jam him. Big hole in left center field, and now there's time call as the ground crew is still picking up some some debris in left field. Big hole in left center field. Lemon over towards right center. Left-hander kicks, ball one outside. On deck, Carl Yastrzemski. Red Sox still looking for their first victory. There's a swing on a changeup. <laughs> A real good rip. One ball and one strike. Top of the second. Those one one nothing. White Sox leading. The Red Sox have got good power in their lineup. There's a breaking ball down and in that the boomer went after didn't get. Montreal and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh finally won one, two to one. Pittsburgh, two runs on seven hits and no errors. Montreal, one run on eight hits. There's a line shot to left field. Back goes Gar. It's over his head. That ball just kept carrying. Now, in the second base goes Scott with a double. And it looked to me like Gar did not really pick up that ball because he wasn't running full speed as he made his pivot. He just seemed to backtrack a little bit. And now the White Red Sox have a runner on second base. The funny thing about playing the outfield, your first step tells the story. If you don't make it on your toes and you make it on your heels, then your eyes start to jump and then you're in trouble. Batting fifth, Carl Yastrzemski, the captain of the Red Sox. A guy can do it all for your ball club throughout the years. He's played first base and left field. Can steal 20 bases for you when he was in his prime. Left hand delivers Brett. Curveball right down the middle. Nobody out. Red Sox now looking to see if Yastrzemski will pull that ball, as the old pro will probably try to do, in the hole between first and second. Order moves over deep on the grass. Spencer is deep. Here's the pitch. Inside brushes Yastrzemski back. The count goes to one ball and one strike. Top of the second inning. White Sox leading one nothing. How about that, Charlie? <laughs> In the third inning, it's all tied up. The Cardinals one and one with the Mets. There's a fly ball off to the right side. In comes this towards the line. Ball wins blowing it back, and he ain't gonna get it. That ball's gonna go for extra bases. The boomer now is being held at third base. He, he went right through the side. He went right through him, and he's got him at the plate. but yet they haven't scored. Evans. White Evans. This young man, good fastball hitter. Infield playing back. Fastball on the inside corner. Call strike one. Ground ball now. 
to anybody but the third baseman or the pitcher will score a run. In center field, straight away is Lemon, not too deep. Flags blowing all ways, straight away in, in the center field flag. Here's the ball swung on and fouled off behind the plate, out of play. Count goes to 0-2. What a day for Major League Baseball. Lynn's not playing center field today for the Red Sox because he's had an ankle injury that he injured in spring training. They put it in a cast. He's on the disabled list. Kind of hurt your ball club to lose him in the lineup. 300 hitter. Drives in around 90 runs. Brett fires. There's a pitch that swung on ground back behind the plate. And Ken throwing that bread and butter pitch of his right now, that good fastball. Brett who's played for quite a few ball clubs. He's with Boston, Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh. and Yastrzemski with his lead. Breaking ball doesn't get it outside. Two balls and two strikes. On deck, Butch Hobson, a third baseman. The left-hander working fast, kicks and delivers. Ground ball out towards third base by Soderholm. Fires over by Bannister, and he gets him on a fine play. Going away from the, the play, he had a cross his body, throw a strike over there, and he did it. Soderholm had a chance to get it, but he couldn't. It was a real tough play for him, and he blocked the view of Bannister, so you got to believe it was an excellent play. And that play goes 6-3, to three, but the run scores, and the game is all tied up. That's an RBI for Evans. Fastball outside, and Hessian must be catching with a crate or something because the players will start howling, push me up a crate, the ball is bouncing out of that new glove he has. Ball game all tied. Top of the second inning. The hitter is Hobson. There's a pitch that gets away from everybody. All the way back to the screen. Two balls, no strikes. Hobson, wide stance at the plate. Young man taking over now that Petroselli has been released by the Red Sox. Hit 25 homes, home runs in Rhode Island last year. Batted 285. Brett delivers. Hey, he went after a high pitch. Tried to hold up, but he couldn't. Two balls and one strike. This lineup is something. They got a lot of guys that can hit it out, about five guys with good power. The 2 1 delivery, fastball high. As Brett, reaching back for a little extra, lets the ball go a little bit too soon. He has to follow through a little better, and he gets behind 3 1. And he's working quick, too. There's a fastball line to center field. In comes Lemon. The young man takes a knee high and a flying catch. Thompson lines to center field. So on two hits, the Red Sox get a run. No errors. Nobody left on base. And the score after one and a half innings of play. The White Sox won. The Red Sox won. Imagine. Jimmy Pearsall with Harry Carey, Mary Shane, and Charlie Warner. On the mound for the Red Sox, Rick Wise. Behind the plate, Bob Montgomery. This game is all tied up. Oscar Gamble. Left-handed hitter. We got for Bucky Dent in a trade. He's got good power. Last year at... 14 home runs and drove in 57 runs not playing every day some ball clubs have a lot of designated hitters and I think the Yankees have when you look at their lineup Kim Wynn doing an outstanding job coming over from Milwaukee and Atlanta ball club he has hit a couple of home runs and kept the Yankees in their ball games even though they're having their problems the Yankees are 1-3 and three. Oscar Gamble, good power, hits from a crouch, holds the bat down at the end, sort of a open stance, like Gene Woodley and so like Vic Power. But when they go to hit, they jump out of there. Wise, kicks, delivers. Fastball outside. Took a little bit off that pitch. What a hole in left center field. Evans, four or five steps over towards right field. Big hole down the line in left field. Hobson, even at the bag at third. One ball pitch and a changeup. Boy, he thought he had it too, and he stands there with his hands on his hips and says to Mr. Springstead, change your mind. That ball was a good pitch. Most pitchers, when they make a good pitch on a changeup, want it because they work so hard to develop it, and then if they don't get it, it doesn't make their fastball worth anything. The 2 0 pitch to Gamble. Ball three. And let's see now, with the wind blowing out a little bit, if Gamble will be hitting 3 0. Looks down at Bobby Knopp. Goes to his face, his nose. I don't know the signs right now, so I can't guess. The 3-0 pitch. 
Steve Reich right down the middle. That was been on base, though. I imagine he'd be hitting right there. Definitely a pull hitter. Good power to center field, too. Notice Minoso in front of the box. I'd move back if I was him with him hitting. The 3-1 pitch. Swung on. Hit foul to Minnie. <laughs> I'm glad it was a high hopper. Those pretty white teeth of Minnie's would be lost. Count goes full now. 3-2. and two. Bottom of the second inning. White Sox and Red Sox all tie at one. White Sox scored a run on a double by order. The 3-2 pitch. Outside, just misses. It's the first walk of the game given up by Wise. Eric Sauter almost stepped in. This guy gets a good piece of the ball, got good bat control. Strong. Physically, this guy has got himself so strong, I'm scared because he uses the weightlifting program that he went through with his knee and with his body. And believe me, he has got strong hands and wrists, too. That's where Ted Williams would always say your hitting comes from, your hands and your wrists. Why he's at the belt, Gamble with his lead. Sauter home ready, breaking ball high on a slider. And that's one pitch you don't want to get up in somebody's eyes. He's got a lifetime batting average of 276, this guy. As he looks down for a sign, Kanap looks away from him, so you're on your own. There's nobody out. Five in the second inning. Good lead by Gamble. Wise with not too good a move. Seems very deliberate. Just want to let you know that he can throw over there. Montgomery, a good utility catcher. Good arm, strong. Second baseman over by the bag. Griffin looking for the double play. There's a pitch high. And now Wise having a lot of problems with his control. Gets behind Sonner home 2-0. Again he looks down for a sign. I don't imagine a hit and run will be on right now because when you're having a pitcher with control trouble, you don't want your hitter having to go after a bad ball for a hit and run. Hobson deep at third. Burleson in the hole at short. At the belt is Wise. There's a pitch swung on it. It was a good slider. Two balls and a strike. And also, howling encouragement. Two balls and a strike. Gamble out on the walk. Outfield straight away. Montgomery giving a sign. There goes a the runner. Here's a throw. And he is safe on a headlong slide. Let's pause here for station identification. This is WMAQ Chicago. Jimmy Pearsall. Back at White Sox Park, Comiskey Park, as Oscar Gamble gets a good lead and dies head first and steals second. The throw was right on the money. But Barnett said he had it deep. Nobody out now, and Sonnerholm would like to hit that ball to the right side to get that runner where he can be scored on a sacrifice fly or a ground ball. Good lead as Burleson comes up behind him. Now he goes back. Has a line drive in the center field. Gamble has to wait to see whether it'll be caught or not. But I don't know what he was waiting for because that ball was hit off the end of the bat and no chance at all for anybody to catch that ball. So there's been on first and third with nobody out. As Gamble steals second and comes to third on a single to center field by Soderholm. Chet Lemon would like to get his first base hit of the year. Young man struggling, swinging hard at pitches, taking a lot of pitches, and then debating it with the umpire. That's the worst thing in the world that any young player can do, is to get in the habit of debating every pitch, because those umpires will really make it tough on you. They don't like to be shown up, because the fans, they feel, come to see them. Runners on first and third, nobody out. Shortstop Burleson, straight away. Hobson, even with the bag. In the stretch is Wisey. Fires a breaking ball low. That was a breaking ball that was out away from Soderholm, who hit it up the middle. Flags now blowing the right pretty good. They can bounce off these stands uh, many times in that fly ball fool you. Right fielder Carbone. Straight away and deep. There's a pitch swung on. Hit the left field. That goes to the Oh, 
puck, and he scores easily, unless it's his leg is bothering him. Those runs have got to score when you hit that ball 380 feet away. So Chet Lemon has got to feel good after hitting a line shot double off the left center field wall. He got a hold of that fastball inside and ripped it. Nobody out. White Sox leading 2-1. Out of home at third base. The boomer in the talk to Wise. He's a little bit even with the bag at first base. Hobson even with the bag at third. Any ground ball, a short or second, the score run. Tim Hesty in the hitter now. Point the bat down at the end. Crouched. There's a breaking ball, fly ball behind the infield. Back goes Burleson. In comes Jasimski. Burleson takes it one hand and his center home comes halfway down. And Burleson fires to the plate. Cut off by Scott. That was a pop-up behind the infield. That pitch jammed him real good. So he pops to six. There we want a ground ball to second base. To score a run. The man on the second base goes to third and we still got a runner in scoring position. Even if he butted it over that way, it's a good play. That was one play I used to ask my manager if he liked. Because many times you come up in that situation. Now the infield plays in on you. With Ralph Gar coming to the plate. Gar scored a run in the first inning on a base hit to left. Outfield straight away. Now center fielder moves over a little bit to left field. Wise. It was wide up delivers. And there's a half swing. Here comes the runner. Hobson comes to get the bare hands. He throws it over his head. ball low. White Sox lead now, four to one, top of the bottom of the second inning. Infield and double play depth. As I try to score this, Charlie, <laughs> what an RBI that was. He hit it about 20 feet. I never hit a ball that short for an RBI in my life. But you know, you'll take all base hits like that, I'll tell you. Wise, looks back at first, there goes the runner. There's, there he can't get out of his glove, but he saved the second. Montgomery can't get the ball out of his glove. As Gar steals second base, he can't have a good jump. Wise, kicking that left foot so high that he doesn't give the catcher time. Montgomery trying to rush his throw, plays howdy duty in the glove, and the throw is late. So a stolen base, second stolen base of the game for the White Sox. This is the kind of baseball that wins you games against good ball clubs. You get them pressing a little bit. One ball and one strike. One out. High. And Wise not throwing good at all right now. Right hander warming up in the bullpen for the Red Sox. Number 17. Two balls and one strike. White Sox with five hits now. Three big runs in the bottom of the second. There's a pitch. One on line drive right field. That's all there for base hit. Not even a, a good fake by Carbo in second and right field. Well, we're having quite a howdy duty in it. Ball's bouncing off the fence. Nobody scored. Base hit to right field. And there was a dunker. That ball was no chance for anybody to catch that ball. Hit off the fist by Bannister. And Gar having to go a little bit halfway and not look at the coach. He's got to look at the ball. Once he sees the ball, then he can score or, or go back. So we're having our trouble getting a lot of base hit throws. I think it's interesting, Jim, that Ralph Gar gets a hit no matter what he does. Even if he just 
tries to back away from the pitch, he ends up getting a hit. That's right. George Orta. Boy, here's a chance for George to pick us up a couple of more runs. That wind is blowing out right here. Get a hold of that slider that he's hanging right now. Bannister with a good lead at first base. Card third. Here's a ground ball. Here's a second base. Makes it. It doesn't want to go all the way to base. There won't be a play on him. Congratulations. No kidding. No kidding. 
Another cash call is coming soon. Another reason to answer every phone call. WMAQ is going to make me rich. Jimmy Pearsall with Mary Shane back in Comiskey Park. White Sox come up with four big runs in the bottom of the second inning to lead five to one. There we got some base hits. And we did, Jim, and you know, this is what we've been seeing all spring. The hits are going to come, and it's really up to the pitching. Now, Ken Brett can hang on to a four-run lead. He seems to be in great shape. But I know he was knocked around a bit in Toronto earlier in the season on our opening day. But uh, he doesn't look too bad today. Let's see if he can hang on to this four-run lead. He had a four-to-one lead going into the third in Toronto. So let's see what happens right here. Beautiful day for baseball. Ballpark in great shape. Crowd of about 25,000 people. Umpires in their short sleeves. Bob Montgomery to hit her. First pitch from Brett. Outside, ball one. Montgomery, good power. Big hole in left center field. There's a pitch, swung on. And Montgomery doesn't get it. One ball and one strike. Pittsburgh beat Montreal 2-1. to one. In the fourth inning, it's the Mets three, St. Louis nothing. Here's a pitch, four down, fly ball center field. Clemmer with a few steps to his right. He's under it now, and he's got it for out number one. Montgomery flies to center field to start things off for the Red Sox. Bernie Carbo will step in. Who was with the Red Sox and hit a home run in a World Series? Found himself in Milwaukee last year and very unhappy. Now is back here again for the trade for Cooper along with Scott as he takes a fastball inside, ball one. Top of the third. Hessian behind the plate in place of Downing. Sonnero walked the bag in deep at third. Carbo with good power to left center field. Very seldom pulls. Here's a pitch. Swung on. Fall off to the right side. Change of speeds. He was out in front. Spencer guarding the line at first base. Order deep at second. Zisco had trouble on a fly ball in the first inning. In the second inning, we'll know that that ball is bowling towards right to left. There's a high fastball, and Carbo has to go down a little bit. Two balls and one strike. Red Sox, 1-1 and lost three. Car moves in a few steps to the left. There's a pitch fly on him. Boy, he jammed him right there. And the ball's fouled off to the left side. Two balls and two strikes. Third inning. No score. Baltimore and Milwaukee. Brett shakes off one sign. Order moves in the hole at second base. Here's a pitch. Swung on. Hit behind the plate. Out of play. And the count remains at two and two. And Harry trying to make his two-string catch with that net. He ought, to, he ought to catch everything in sight, including any money from the stands. Dollar bills, you can't catch coins. <laughs> Charlie just threw the uh, styrofoam baseball. In it. There's a pitch line to short right at him. A breaking ball that Carvel waited well on and hit a line short shot right at short. So now there's two outs as Cabo lines to Bannister. Rick Burleson got a base hit his first time up. Single to right field with two strikes on him. Hits that ball inside out. Pretty good power for a little guy. Hits seven home runs. There's a fastball line down the left field line. That's going to be in for extra bases. Connor trying to get it and the fans picked it up. And a breaking ball that hung a little bit. Brett got a rip. Double hit off him. And now at second base is Burleson with two outs. Stepping in, Doug Griffin. Stowe has been around about five or six years. Plays mostly against left-handers. Denny Doyle, the left-hander, plays against right-handers. 189 and 49 games last year. Hasn't got a base hit yet this year. Good lead is second is Burleson. Here's the pitch. Right down the middle. Call strike one. Bannister giving the hole at shortstop. He's over by the bag a little bit. 
Big hole in left center field. Lemon shallow in right center. There's a pitch. Ground ball off towards third. Kind of slow. Sonoro picks it up and fires the first. Round number three. And Brett gets himself out of a jam after a double off the bat of Burleson. And the score, after two and a half innings of play, is the White Sox five to go off the Red Sox one. Lots of places offer gifts for saving, but at Avondale Savings, we offer one very special kind of gift. White Sox lead 5-1 in the bottom of the third inning. On the mound for the Red Sox, Tom Murphy in relief of Rick Wise. Well, you <laughs> the governor just stepped in. Now, Governor Thompson, it's, it's wonderful to see people at the ballpark and have such a beautiful day. It sure is, and it's wonderful to have this score, too. Well, I got, I got to believe that you're a homer like I am. <laughs> well, I tell you, if I leave now, the White Sox will win. I came out to the Cubs game last week. I stayed too long in the so I promised it. I just talked to Bill Vecca. I said, I'm leaving right now. i got to go back to work. Your head don't blow it. And he said, all right. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. Looking at you, I seem to believe you played a little athletics. No, actually, I didn't start until about a year ago during the course of the campaign when I picked up racquetball. Right. Oh, even though I'm tall, I was always slow, and we had a championship basketball team when I was in high school, so they didn't need me. Jim Spencer tries to butt a ball down the third base line, but he pops it up, and Tom Murphy takes it for out number one. I tried tennis. We always wanted to be a golfer, yeah. but tennis has gotten me to the point where I'm got to be quicker, I'm, I respire better, I, I feel better. You know, after all having open-heart surgery like I had, uh, I really feel so much better. I started tennis lessons about a year ago at uh, McClurg Court. But I had such a fussy coach, he made me stand still and perfect the swing and went right to the racquetball. It's a great game, a great exercise. The only exercise I'm getting today, though, is a few beers at the ballpark. <laughs> That's all right. You can do that once in a while. Oscar Gamble, who walked and stole second and scored a run, steps in, takes the first pitch right down the pipe for a strike. Well, I watch you guys on television and see things about how hard you have to work. I can imagine you can get uh, attention to what you're doing. Yeah, it's true. I'd, I'd like to stay out for the rest of the day. I'm going to go back and meet with legislative leaders this afternoon, if you can imagine that. And then oh. back to Springfield tonight. But well, uh, it's a great think... job because there great people came come up to you all the time and, and say thank you. That makes it all nice, you know. It is. You know, like being welcome myself just coming here and maybe seeing me on television and have these fans say hello to me and meet people on the street. I'm so glad I do the post-game show when they meet me. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> you know, the count now is 2-1 and one on Oscar Gamble. As a pitch outside corner, a strike two. And Gamble, not liking it at all, said a few words to Springstead. <laughs> uh, I watched the catcher. He looked like he had to move his glove off a little bit, but uh, there again, I'm not as good an umpire up here as I was on the field. It's all on the angle. That's right. Two balls and two strikes. Bottom of the fourth. White Sox leading 5-1. Of course, we found that to be true in politics, too. It's all on the angle. <laughs> That's right. A lot of hard work, too. The 2-2 pitch from Murphy. Has a pitch hit right back to him. A little high hopper. And he takes a couple of steps and fires it over to first base. And right away, you'll find that... When some pitchers change speeds on our hitters, we have trouble. And that's what young Garvin did the other day in Toronto. That changes speeds if you get it over. makes your fastball much better and also gets your good hitters leaning a little bit. They hit those little ground balls like that. How many knuckleballers are there left? That used to be the rage, what, 10 years ago, 15 years ago? Well, you don't have your Wilhelm anymore. you still got Wood. There's a fastball to Soderholm as he steps in right down the middle, strike one. And uh, Del Kent, we have a, a new relief pitcher here, has a knuckleball. 1-0 pitch, swung on a fly ball, out behind second base. In comes Carbo. Takes a few steps, and he's got it for out number three. Three. And the White Sox go down 1-2-3. Here in the third inning, the score after three complete innings of play, the White Sox five, the, White, the Red Sox one. Don't use water that's hotter than you need. Hi, this is your energy economist here with another energy-saving tip from People's Gas. Keep your water heater's dial set at normal or 140 degrees. That's perfect for most family uses, so why spend more for hotter water than you really need in your household? When you do need water over 140, turn the dial up to hot, but don't forget to lower it when normal will do again. And here's another tip. Once a month, drain a few gallons from your water heater's tap and flush out sediment and lime deposits. You'll save gas and your water heater. The Energy Economist was brought to you by People's Gas. For more ways to conserve gas energy, send for our free booklet, Tips on How to Stop Wasting Gas Energy and Money. Write People's Gas, 
Box 22, Chicago 60690. Your free energy saving guide will be on its way. Hello again, everybody. This is Harry Carey at Comiskey Park as we go now into the top of the fourth inning. Five to one in favor of the Chicago White Sox. A big crowd has really enjoyed what's happened so far. the designated hitter. He bounced out his first time up. And the first pitch. A little bit low on outside. Group here from Northern Illinois University at DeKalb. center field, uh, they try to keep the people out of the uh, center section. They want them to sit on the side so they won't block the vision of the hitter. the former American League umpire watching the game here today. There's a curveball of an outside to Rice. This fellow's good hitter. Now to wind up the pitch, here it is. Swings and he misses. Rice just 23 in his third full season with the Red Sox. Well, the Pirates won the first game of the year beat Montreal 2-1 to today. Now the wind up the pitch. Swung on a high pop foul out of play. The count is evened up. Two balls. Two strikes. Nobody on, nobody out. We're at the top of the fourth inning. Nice wire here from Charlie Warner, the general manager of WMAQ, our White Sox baseball station. Charlie's going to be the host tonight to the Stroh Brewery and his representatives out to Sheridan Oak Brook. Two balls, two strikes. Right-hand hitter, Jim Rice. Not a single given. Fine crowd on hand, must be in excess of 30,000. The pitch, fastball low. And the count is full on rice. Three balls, two strikes. Nobody on and nobody out the pitch. One, a little roller. Bannis at the shortstop. Fires the first for the out. One gone. And that will bring up George Scott. Scott double in the second inning. Five to one in favor of the White Sox. Charlie Weiner sends three telegrams. One to Jimmy, one to Mary, and one to me. And one four telegrams. One to Bob Lemon, the manager. One ball, no strikes, one out. Now the pitch swung and he missed and he really had a cut. That evens up the count of the ball and a strike. Night game of the year, Friday night against Toronto, and boy, this weather is ideal for it. The pitch, foul back. In the bottom of the fifth, the Mets lead the Cardinals three to nothing. Ah, nice cold bottle of Stroh's right here. Boy, this 84 degree weather. That's when baseball was meant to be played. The pitch swung and fouled again. 
Two strikes on the ball. We're in the fourth. Jim Janik from Cafe Bohemia. Watching the game here today. Jimmy Gallios has a busload from Miller's Pub. One out, nobody on the pit. High fastball. That evens the count. Two balls, two strikes. Ken Brett on the hill. Ball game in the fourth. Here's the pitch. Swung on a high, towering fly ball. Should be caught. Go under the ball. At the warning track. Makes the cut. Boy, that ball was a mile high. That's liable to bring rain. Here's Carl Yastrzemski. He doubled in the second. The wind's blowing out of the southwest at 16 miles an hour. It was 84 degrees at game time. Two and a half, nobody on. Carl Yastrzemski, the batter. <coughs> now the pit. Started the swing and he held up. One ball, no strikes. Well, we should have worn our shorts today. There's a pitch swung on, a ground ball to the first baseman, Spencer. Steps on the back to retire the side. One, two, three, nothing across. We go to the bottom of the fourth. White Sox five, Boston one. Nobody out. 
Here now is Rob Gar. The pitch. He was going to body miss. There's a throw down to second base. Lemon gets back safely. They almost picked him off. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. Ball game at the bottom of the fourth. Five to one in favor of the White Sox. On the stretch. The pitch. Try to bunny bunch foul. Now strike two. Guards have two hits. Drove in a run. Scored two. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. Lauren Brown not with us today. Being away on basketball assignment for the Bulls game tonight. He'll rejoin us tomorrow. Two strikes and nothing. Left-hand batter digging in. Now the pitch by Tom Murphy. High pop foul. The catcher Montgomery chasing it. Goes to third base for Hobson. And Hobson makes the catch. Gar fouls to Hobson. One away. Here's Bannister. Bannister's one out of two today. The boy is nine years old, celebrating his ninth birthday today. So Bannister, see what he can do here. Runners at first and second, one out. Now the pitch. Curveball, low and away. Tom Murphy used to be with the Angels, among other clubs. Relieve Rick Wise in the third, in the second. Runners at first and second, one out. Now the pitch to Bannister. Here it is. There goes the runner on second. He swings. The ground ball. It's fair. Wait a minute. Now let's see. Nope. They rule this foul. Let's see. Foul ball. As the runners were breaking, Bannister swung and he hit the ball right to Hobson, who was standing on the back. But he fielded it in foul territory. still alive. The Red Sox are getting ready to walk off the field thinking they had executed the double play. Thompson stepping on third and throwing it first. But the third base umpire had indicated Al Evans that it was foul. A ball and a strike. Alan Bannister the hitter. Murphy ready to pitch. Here it is. Fastball inside. Two balls and a strike. White Sox has shown a lot of speed, a lot of hitting. This afternoon, to the enjoyment of this big crowd. Two balls and a strike. Bannister, right hand hitter. Now the delivery, here it is. Strike, a good fastball. And now the count evens, two balls, two strikes. Murphy, a tall, slim right-hander Looks down, gets set Now ready The pitch on the way Here it is Swim on, fly ball, the left field's going to be caught The Stremski has it The runners hold Now there's two away and here's Horta He's driven in runs as each of his two previous times at bat. Murphy is 31. He's been with California, Kansas City, the Cardinals, Milwaukee, and now the Red Sox. Went to Ohio University. One great season for Milwaukee in relief. He won 10 lost them with an earned run average of 1.90. So here is Horta. Runners at first and second. Now the 
stretch the pitch. Fastball low and inside, ball one. One ball, no strikes. SC in first base, Lemon at second. Ball game in the fourth. Now the signal given. Here's the pitch on the way. Please, and he fouls it back. Boy, he really had a good rip of that one. A ball on a strike. Left-hand hitter waiting. On the side. At the belt, the pitch. Low. Two balls to the strike. White Sox wearing their white tops. Navy blue pants. Red and white shoes. Two balls and a strike. Now the pitch. He jams him. He hits a little over to the second baseman. Griffin's got it. Over to first to retire the side. So he had a great opportunity that time. But no runs, two hits, no errors. Two left. And at the end of four, the White Sox, five, Boston, one. Now what has become my favorite beer? Strokes. I'm sure you've noticed how much alike beer commercials really are. They all talk about the same things, how they use the finest ingredients, and how their brewing techniques are better, and etc. Me, all I care about is the taste. Maybe it is the unique fire brewing that Stroh's uses. I don't know. But once you taste Stroh's beer, you know it is unmistakably different. That's right. Stroh's beer tastes good. Stroh's beer from the Stroh Brewery, Detroit, Michigan. When we say we're having cash call winners all over Chicago and we mean it. A beer make you come make beer rich. Good morning, this is Lee Sherwood calling from WMAQ. And you've just won two brand new cars and $3,000 in cash. Congratulations. No kidding. No kidding. <laughs> Another cash call is coming soon. Another reason to answer every phone call. WMAQ is going to make me rich. Harry Terry back at the ballpark. We're going down to the top of the fifth inning. Card here from the Hangovers SAC, nonprofit organization. Bob Musser, president. <laughs> they want to be remembered to KR at Holy Cross Hospital. Hope he's back in circulation. Bill Pollard watching the game. The Dale AC from Rockdale are here. Here's Evans to lead it off against Brett. The first pitch is high. Boys are here from the Steakhouse in Highland, Indiana. They're here from Franklin Park. Now the pitch. Swim on, popped up. Foul territory, Spencer calling to the ball. Makes the catch. Evans fouled to Spencer. One away. Thompson, the third baseman. Wide out his first time. One out, nobody on the pitch. Fastball a little bit low. White Sox play Boston here again tomorrow afternoon at 1.15. We'll be on the air at 1 o'clock. Then Thursday's an off day. First night game of the year, Friday night. There's a pitch outside. Swung on in line, center field base hit. Thompson singles to center. With one out. You know, the old auxiliary uh, press box used to be used for football. Has been turned into a sky box, which is available to groups of 40. I think they charge them $400 for 40. Have their own bar up there, their own booze. I guess it's pretty nice. 
One out, one on, and here's Bob Montgomery. Hits a ground ball, foul down the third baseline. Soderholm scoops it up. Ball game in the fifth. Five to one in favor of the White Sox. Now the pitch. Good fastball right in there. Strike two. Montgomery, the hitter, flying out his first time. Right hand batter waiting. Now Brett gets set the pitch on the way. Here it is. Swung on and foul into the upper deck. Hey, a souvenir. It deflects off one fan's hands and to another. Some win, some lose. Baltimore, Milwaukee, no score at the end of five. One out, one on. Now the pitch, here it is. Barely missed with the fastball. And a count, two strikes and a ball. We're in the fifth. Right hand hitter waiting. Jim Brett is set. The delivery. Low ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Chris Snap will pitch Friday night. Bart Johnson goes tomorrow afternoon. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch. Foul back. Into the upper deck. Fortune Renucci, the owner of Adolphs. Watching the game. Sitting in restaurant row. So is Gene Micheletti, the owner of Gene and George Eddy. Here's a pitch. Strike three. He went around. He tried to stop, but he had gone around. Marty Springstead, the plate umpire. And Montgomery's arguing about that. Well, that's two gone. Up on the board, they welcome her. Louis Zahn. Back to the ballpark. Drug magnet. That's the first strikeout of the ball game. Three to side. Here's Bernie Carbo. One ball, no strikes. We're in the top of the fifth, five to one in favor of the, favor of the White Sox. Now the pitch is a fastball in there, a strike ball. I mentioned all the telegrams that Charlie Warner sent today. I wish he'd save that money and give me a little more. One ball, one strike. Two men are out. Throw over to first base. Runner back. Now the signal given. Here's the pitch. A little bit inside. <laughs> the fans, apparently they... Uh, Vendors aren't coming by as often as they'd like to. Two balls and a strike. Now the pitch. Bouncing ball. Bannister up with it. There's the peg in time to retire the shot. And it's no runs, one hit, no errors. One left. We go to the bottom of the fifth. White Sox, five. Boston, one. <laughs> The Chevette scooter is happily priced, only $29.99. That's manufacturer's suggested retail price, including dealer preparation, taxes, license, destination charge, and available equipment addition. Chevette is rated at 43 miles per gallon highway, 31 miles per gallon city, with available 1.6 liter engine and manual transmission. EPA estimates actual mileage may vary. No American car has ever sported EPA mileage ratings like these before. Larry Carey back in the ballpark as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Richie Ziss will be leading.
kicking it off. Richie playing his first game as a member of the White Sox here at Comiskey Park. It hasn't been a brilliant debut as yet. He popped up with the man on the first and into a double play and the second. And this judge a fly ball. But get a good look at that because you won't see him do anything like that very often. A real solid ball player. And a good hitter. Nice crowd on hand. I, I guess around 30. Maybe a little better. Richie's just leading it off. Now Tom Murphy into the wind of the pit. Slow ball a little bit outside and low. Murphy's done a fine job in relief. He's pitched two and two-thirds innings without allowing a run. One ball, no strikes. The pit. Swung and a high pump foul back and out of play. Richie was going for the downs on that one. There's the spectator made the catch and being congratulated. A ball and a strike. Now the wind up the pit. Here it is. Slow ball goes behind him. Two balls and a strike. Bottom of the fifth. Five to one, Chicago. Red Sox here again tomorrow afternoon. Now the pitch, here it is. Held up in time, the fastball is low. Three balls and a strike. The outfield plays this around towards the left. There's ball four inside. He walked it. This is the fifth inning. In four of the five innings, the leadoff man has been on base for the White Sox. This Spencer hitless today, nothing out of two. Spence looking for his first home run of the year. Gamble has the only home run hit by the White Sox this year. There goes the runner, the pitch. Straight call, the peg, and he is out trying to steal. I think somebody missed a sign. This would not be trying to steal on his own. I think Spencer might have missed the hit and run sign. Because he took the pitch for a strike call, and this was out trying to steal. With the shortstop, Burleson making the tag. One out, nobody on. Now Spencer steps out of the batter's box. Bright sunshine, 84 degrees at game time. Beautiful afternoon. Now the wind up the pitch. Swung and a high pop foul coming back. Hey! I thought I'd have a chance on that one, but... Strikes are nothing on Spencer. Why those styrofoam uh, baseballs turned out real good. Here's a pitch swung on, a ground ball. Fair, down the first base line. A base hit, Spencer's going for two, and he'll make it easily. Spencer grounds a double over first base. So here's Oscar Gamble now, who has the only home run hit this year. game of the year Friday night against Toronto. Well, that Toronto ball club has gotten away to a great start. They're leading the Eastern Division. They've won three, lost one. The Yankees have won one, lost three. They've lost the last three in a row. Here's Gamble. Hits out of a low crouch. Nancy Klaus entertaining. Now Murphy set at the belt to pitch on the way. Held up in time and it was high. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. A short sleeve crowd here today. Boy, those center field bleachers are jammed. 
That'd be the place to be today. A million dollar can. Out of pitch. Swung and he missed and he really had a cut. That evens it up. A ball and a strike. Oscar Gamble waiting. One away. Now Murphy is set. Takes a look at Spencer. Now delivers. Slow ball outside. Two balls and a strike. He just floated that one up there. Warren Brown now with us today, being away for the basketball game tonight. He'll rejoin us tomorrow. Two balls and a strike. The pitch to Gamble. Low outside, ball three. Eric Soderholm will be next. Down the side, three balls and a strike. Gamble will be cutting if it's a pitch he likes. The outfield bunches him towards center. Now the pitch. High pop fly. The right fielder Carbo coming in. Center fielder Evans. And Evans makes the catch. So it's up to Satterhall now. White Sox been wasting a couple of opportunities in the later innings. After scoring one of the first and four in the second. Eric Satterhall is one out of two today. What a day. What an afternoon. Right hand hitter. Digging in. Now the pitch by Murphy. Here it is. Good curveball right in there. A strike call. Murphy, a 31-year-old right-hander. Two men are out. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Five to one in favor of the White Sox. Now the delivery. Foul. Bobby Knapp skips the rope to get out of the way. Two strikes and nothing. Well, I'd like to add a few more runs. These Red Sox. Score runs easily. They got a lot of power in their batting order. Now Murphy gets set. Two strikes to nothing. The Mets are leading the Cardinals four to nothing at the end of seven. Cubs play later tonight at Philadelphia. Now to stretch the pit. Fastball outside. And the count, two strikes and the ball. We're in the fifth, five to one Chicago. Murphy, a tall right-hander. Two strikes and the ball. Now the pitch. Here it is. Hey, struck him out swinging. So another good chance, wasted no runs. One hit, no errors, one left at the end of five. White Sox five, Boston one. Owned and operated offices in North America. With Mary Shane and Jimmy Pierce, all this is Harry Carey back at Comiskey Park. A couple dancing in the aisle. To give you an idea of their age, they're waltzing. Well, I don't know. Is she moving it around a little better than a waltz right now? <laughs> ah, you can't be fun at the old ballpark. Right? I wonder how they... How things are over at McCutty's across the street. Here we go into the sixth inning. And leading it off, Rick Burleson. He's singled and doubled so far. First pitch is low and outside. Now the line, the pitch, a fastball in there, a beauty, a strike call. 
Red Sox here tomorrow afternoon at 1.15. Then Toronto will be here over the weekend, the Canadian weekend. Now the pitch, fastball outside. Canadian weekend sounds like a song. See, that's Canadian sunset, isn't it? Now the pitch, swung and he fouled it back. Two strikes. Baltimore and Milwaukee, no score in the sixth. The Cardinals about to suffer their first defeat of the year. They're trailing in New York four to nothing. Pittsburgh beat Montreal two to one for their first victory after losing their first three. Nobody on and nobody out. Two two pitch here it is. Ball high and outside. Three balls, two strikes. Rick Burleson, the hitter. Right hand hitter digging in. The wind up the pit. Swung, ground ball headed for left field. A diving stop by Sauter Holmes, but he can't make a throw. He dropped the ball after getting up to his feet. Made a diving stop. It's Burleson's third hit in the roll. Second baseman, Doug Griffin. Right hand hitter, runner at first base, nobody out to pit. Sinking fastball, low and outside. Griffin, 29 years old, used to be in the Angels organization. One ball, no strikes. The pit. Good fastball over the outside corner. And that evens it up with a ball and a strike. Texas and Kansas City are unbeaten in the American League West. Each has won their first four. Now the pitch, here it is. Low outside, ball two. Two balls and a strike, we're in the sixth. Five to one in favor of Chicago. A lead off first base by Burleson. The pitch swung, a high pop fly. Short right field coming on is this. But Lemon makes the cut. Richie Ziss was getting under the ball, but Lemon yelled for it and made a one-handed cut. The wind kept blowing the ball away from Ziss towards center field. One out. A runner at first base. One out now. And here's Rice. Rice is nothing out of two today. A dangerous right-hand batter. Now the stretch, the pitch. And it's a curveball snap to the first. They almost had him. See? Boy, that throw been a little lower than ahead of him. And the first base coach, Johnny Pesky, talking to, Dick, to Rick uh, Bursa now. Telling him to hold on. Four runs behind. Rice digging in. Now the pitch, here it is. Low inside. That evens a count and a ball and a strike. Here's a guy that can put a team in a ball game in a hurry with one swing. This Rice. Now to stretch the pit. There's a smash to left, a base hit. Play went from Gar to Bannister to Satterhall. Bannister, a very alert cutoff, and flipped it into Satterhall, and they got Burleson. And with the team four runs behind, a very, very questionable base running on the part of Burleson.
No error is charged because he cut the man down. Guard gets an assist, so does Bannister. Soderholm got the put out. Two out now, Rice took second on the play. And there's George Scott. He doubled and flat out. Dangerous right hand hitter. On the stretch, the pitch. Line drive right field. Now here's a runner around third base. Here's a throw coming towards the plate. And he's safe. Five to two ball game. Scott singles to right. Driving in a run. And it's now five to two. That brings up Yastrzemski. Boy, I tell you, with Rice, Scott, Yastrzemski, and Evans in the middle of their lineup, this is a club that can, can score a lot of runs. They're hitting Brett rather solidly. Two men are out. Boy, it's a good thing Burleson tried to go to third. Here's a pitch swung on. High, towering fly ball. Should be caught. Lemon calling for it. And he has it to retire the side. One run, three hits. No errors, two left. A oh, one left, brother. And we move now into the bottom of the six with a score. The White Sox five, the Red Sox two. Harry Carey back at the ballpark. We're going into the bottom of the sixth inning. White Sox leading five to two. The way these Red Sox have been banging the ball around, it wouldn't hurt any to make a few extra runs. The lead is only three. Bottom of the sixth. He doubled in the run of the second, he singled in the fourth. Right hand hitter, Tom Murphy, who has stopped the White Sox cold in relief, goes into the wind up the pit. Curve swung on a high pop fly. Yastrzemski coming in, under the ball, makes the catch. And here's Jim Essia. He's one out of two today, catching in place of Brian Downing. One out, nobody on. Five to two in favor of the White Sox. Ball to board, Milwaukee, no score at the end of six. The Mets are leading the Cardinals four to nothing at the end of eight. Pittsburgh defeated Montreal two to one. Pirates have lost three in a row. Now the pitch. Curveball low outside. Ball one. One man out, nobody on base. The ball game in the sixth. Detroit getting underway at Toronto. Now the pitch. Low inside. The Tigers haven't won a ball game yet. They've lost four in a row. The Toronto ball club has won three and lost one. Here's a pitch a little bit low, Nelson. So the Toronto Blue Jays are in first place in the American League East. Ahead of powers like the Yankees and the Red Sox and Cleveland. Now the pitch. Good fastball is in there. And that even makes the count two balls and a strike. Right hand hitter, Jim Essie. Now the wind up the pitch, here it is. High pop fly. That'll be easy. Evans coming in. Under the ball, makes the catch. Two up, two down. And here's the leadoff man, Ralph Gar. Here's Ralph Gar. Gar is two out of three today. Public Duration's uh, expert Aaron Cushman watching the game. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled out of play. That was
was a slow ball, and Gore waited for it, tried to poke it into left field, but fouled it off. This crowd really enjoying itself today. One strike to nothing to wind up the pitch. Bouncing ball to the second baseman. Griffin's got it over to first. Easy out to retire the side. One, two, three. Nothing in crowd. And at the end of six, it's still White Sox by Boston, two. Hops and the finest barley, and Stroh's is the only beer in America that's fire brewed. That fire brings out the full flavor of the finest, the most expensive ingredients that go into making Stroh's the truly fine beer that it is, and one so popular wherever it becomes available. Me, I judge beer on how it tastes to me, and that's what you're going to like about Stroh's too. It goes down real good. From one beer lover to another, drink Stroh's. Stroh Brewery Company, Detroit, Michigan. When we say we're having cash call winners all over Chicagoland, we mean it. How do you make you come make me rich? Good morning, this is Lee Sherwood calling from WMAQ. And you just won two brand new cars and $3,000 in cash. Congratulations. No kidding. No kidding. <laughs> Another cash call is coming soon. Another reason to answer wow, every crazy. phone call. Who am I talking WMAQ about? is going to make me rich. Now is saying a few words. Marty's 
Springstead behind the plate today, talking with Bob Montgomery, and now he's back in the box and should stay there as there's a 2-0 count on him, and this one's outside for ball three, so Ken Brick getting behind the hitters now. Two down, nobody on. You're in the top of the seventh inning, and the White Sox are leading by a score of 5-2. to two. Here's the three-ball pitch, and that one's ball four low, so he gets to first base on four pitches. I would believe you'll see somebody warming up because he seems to be weakening a little bit. Last couple of innings, balls were hit harder. They got a run off him in the sixth inning, and now uh, his, his fastball seems to be a little bit shorter. We'll watch to see if there is someone warming up, and now Bernie Carbo comes to the plate, left-handed hitter against the left-hander Ken Brett. We were talking about the CTA and how you can easily get to the ballpark on the CTA. It connects with all CTA rapid transit systems and with the bus routes. So it's the cheapest and the easiest way to get out to the ballpark. Bernie Carbo takes a big swing, doesn't connect, and that's strike one, so it's 0-1 on him. Two down, runner at first base. Yes. Ken Brett lost Bob Montgomery on four pitches. I think that may be his first walk of the game. I'm just checking over. It looks like it is. He goes around again for strike two. So 0-2 now on Bernie Carbo. And Bernie Carbo... He was quoted just the other day as saying that... Uh, he thought Here we go. We're experiencing some technical difficulties. Stay with us. We'll have it fixed in just a moment. Can I guess that's who you'd like to have up with a runner on third base? There's one out, 
in the seventh inning. White Sox are leading five right to two. Richie Ziff. George Ordis on third base. Richie Ziff, the big, strong, right-handed hitter. Big run for us right here. I couldn't think of anybody more I'd like to see up at the plate right now. He doesn't have to hit the ball hard. It'll go out about 300 feet. Richie Ziff has had a good spring and a good first few games. pitch to him. That's high and outside for ball one. There's some action now in the Red Sox bullpen over there. I believe that's Jim Willoughby. Jim Willoughby. Thank you, Jim. I hope we see him. You think the White Sox will hit well against Jim Willoughby? We're in good shape if he comes in. We're ahead. Here's the pitch now. That's a strike and it caught that outside corner. And the crowd doesn't like it. One and one count on Richie Zisk, the Polish prince from Pittsburgh. What helps Zisk right now, you got... Spencer coming up after him, who can hit that ball a long way too. So they can't pick it as careful if he didn't have a good hitter coming up. No. There goes catcher Bob Montgomery out to the mound to talk briefly with Tom Murphy as we've got a one and one count on Richie Ziss. Runner at third base and one out. You know what he's saying? So I don't get much chance to catch. You're making me look back back here. Get the ball over with something on the push. He's back behind the plate again. Richie Ziss. of the seventh inning. White Sox on top by three. And of course, this Red Sox team has got a lot of power. They can come back at any time. He takes the next pitch outside for ball two, so it's two and one. The Red Sox can come back with a big inning. That's the way they played for years for that big inning, and they could have it any time. So the White Sox would like to have some insurance runs right now, and a good chance with the slugging Richie's disc at the plate. Here's the two-one pitch to him, and that's a strike that the fans don't agree with. The call strike, and it's two and two. I hear you're groaning over there, Jim. Well, what I'm groaning about, if this isn't that the umpire, he would like to swing at that pitch because it was inside. And even though it was breaking, that could go a long way. He was looking for something else. Two and two count on him, and there's someone else now up in the Red Sox bullpen, so they've got a right-hander and a left-hander warming up. Here's the pitch to this. He swings and misses. A big out for Tom Murphy and the Boston Red Sox. Next up is Jim Spencer, and as you said, he can certainly hit the ball a long way, too. He's uh, one for three today. And he had a good spring and a good Chris summer. Spencer. Jim Spencer. Runner on third base, two down, and Jim Spencer at the plate. The left-handed hitter against the right-hander, Tom Murphy. And they'll play Spencer just about uh, straight away. They don't really play him to pull much. And they're playing him about medium depth. George Scott will play way back at first. And at third, Butch Hobson is almost on the infield grass. Jim Spencer. He's quite a defensive first baseman as well as a good hitter. I guess we'd have to say we've got the two best defensive first basemen in the American League playing in this game today. So we have the light one and the fat one. I, would say, I was just going to say we'd probably disagree as to which was the best, but they're both good. I'll be diplomatic and say that. Jim Spencer does an excellent job out there. Here's the pitch to him. It's outside for ball one. All kinds of excitement coming up at Comiskey Park when the Toronto Blue Jays come in this weekend with an international flavor and all kinds of gifts for the first people to come. I understand Sunday it's grab bag day and in that grab bag is a recording of Harry Carey singing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Here's the pitch now to Spencer and that's a strike called so it's one and one. So who could resist Harry Carey singing Take Me Out to the Ball Game? I just heard it myself for the first time and uh, it's an experience that I wouldn't have wanted to miss. One and one count on Jim Spencer. Runner at third base is George Order. There's two down in the bottom of the seventh, and the White Sox are on top, five to two. Tom Murphy on the mound. He came in uh, in the second inning when the White Sox had a very big inning, scored four runs. In relief of Rick Wise. Here's the pitch to Spencer. A little blooper hit right out to the pitcher Murphy. He throws over to Scott at first, and he's got him. One to three. So in the inning, there are no runs on one hit. No errors and one left. And after seven, it's still the White Sox five and the Red Sox two. The Lee Maxi 2 oil filter packs more protection. Here's a dirty word for you. Bypass. That's what your car's oil filter does when it stops filtering. Single-stage filters bypass dirty oil right into your engine as they get dirty. When you start cold or step on the gas, we think it's a dirty trick. Lee Maxi 2 packs in a second stage. 
are triggered by a second valve, so Maxi Tool keeps on filtering when the others quit. Maxi Tool traps more dirt than leading single stage filters, even ours. Lee Maxi Tool. We pack more protection in, you get more protection out. Lee Maxi 2 packs more protection. Get it at Treasury Stores, Gold Blast, True Value Hardware Dealers, Winter Circle Star Stores, and Turnstile. Welcome back to White Sox Baseball. White Sox leading 5 2 in the top of the eighth inning. I'm here with Harry Carey and Mary Shane. The Red Sox is sent to the plate. Rick Burleson, he's two for three on the day. Shortstop with good power. The little guy. He's trying to get a base on balls here right now to get something going. Brad has given up eight hits. White Sox have not made an error. Some fine plays today. Soder home. An excellent play behind third. Big hole in left center field right now. Got two pitchers warming up in the bullpen, a right-hander and a left-hander. Hamilton and Legro, I believe. First pitch from Brett. Fly ball right field. And the sun is really bothering him right now, and he's having his troubles, but he got it. Boy, let me tell you, that sun is really settled out in right field, right by the track. Ball was hit fairly well. He had to go back a couple of steps. Zisk put his glove up in front of his eyes. So out number one on a fly ball to right field. Doug Griffin. Griffin 0 for 3. Hit him with double play in the first. 5 to 3 in the third. The first pitch from Brett. Fly ball. 90 in field. Back goes order. In comes Zisk. Zisk is calling for it. And he's got it. Boy, he's not too sure of it. He's a little white there. He had a little ice cream cone. I mean to tell you, I played out there and it is tough. An experienced outfielder has all he has to do is try to get that particular ball. Two outs. And in a hurry, both to right field. White Sox got one in the first, four in the second. Red Sox with one in the second and one in the sixth. Top of the eighth. Sox lead five to two. Two outs. Jim Rice the hitter. Rice got an RBI. And he swings and misses. Well, he takes a hefty swing, this young man. He's got good power. In the Fenway ballpark, it's built for him. Jim, I've just been looking at Ken Brett, and it seems to me that he might be getting stronger as he goes along. He's looking very good in his last inning. You know, he, the hitters are helping him, too, by chasing that first pitch. You know, usually in this type of ball game, you'd like to go up and take a couple of pitches and try to get a walk. But they swung at pitches right away. One strike on Rice, two outs. Out two around towards left. There's a broken bat hit in the right center field. Rice gets his second hit. The center field. They're down by three, and here comes the boomer. Last time up, he hit a ball off the end of the bat in the right field for a base hit. Mary didn't like that at all. <laughs> you just call it a line drive, and it was an obvious blooper. That's why I was saying before that the Red Sox hit 134 home runs last year to lead the American League. So they can bounce at you any time. Threat now. Going to a stretch. Spencer off the bag at first. A high fastball for a ball. Porter over by the bag at second. Outfield and center is really deep as lemon as the flags are blowing out towards left field. There's a pitch, and Boomer went after and foul tipped it in the catcher's glove. One ball and one strike. The Mets beat St. Louis four to nothing. The Cardinals off to a pretty good start, beating Pittsburgh three straight. Spencer gets away from the bag. There's a breaking ball down. What a beautiful day in that sun. we we to give that right fielder a fit in right center field. So this would be very happy if they hit it anywhere but right field. Bannister deep at short. Soderholm off the bag and almost to the grass. A 2-1 pitch. Outside ball three. And now, Brett having a little difficulty. And the bullpen seems to hurry a little bit as Hamilton's warming up quickly with LaRoe. 
Well, just as I said he was getting stronger, he obviously is not getting stronger and perhaps tiring a bit. Well, let's see what he does here on three and one. Breaking ball off. Strike, and he didn't like it at all. And he really threw him out. Really give it to him right in his face. Boy, I want to tell you, he really give it to him. That's a major league. Let him have it. I like that. Hello, boy, Boomer. Boy, he gave it to him. He gave it to him. He wish he had the back in his mouth. Well, I don't know whether that pitch was a strike or not, but i got to believe it. He don't say too much, you know. Now he's going over to Rosenbag.
the job done. So the high fastball away from him. That Powell hit off the end of the bat. This getting back to the track and made the catch. So he made all three put outs. They get a couple of runners on, but they don't score. And the score after seven and a half innings of play. The White Sox five, the Red Sox two. Jimmy Pearsall with Harry Carey and Mary Shaw. Lauren Brown is in Portland for the start of the series between Portland and the Chicago Bulls tonight. That ball game will be on at 10 o'clock. I imagine all you sports fans will enjoy that. Willoughby now pitching. Willoughby was in a giant organization, went to Boston. He appeared in 54 games, pitched 99 innings. Won three and lost 12, but he had a great ERA of 2.82 with 10 saves. So it's quite unusual. Here's a guy with three wins and 12 losses. He'll be facing Oscar Gamble. Murphy goes out after doing a super job. Came in in the second inning, didn't give up a run. And one, two, three, four, five, five innings. Now we have a little timeout in right field as the fans are throwing papers on and the ground crew is working at it. Will it be a sinker ball pitcher? Has to have a lot of work. The more work he has, the tighter he gets and his ball sinks. He's a wiry guy. He stands about six feet four. Weighs 205 pounds. He kicks and he delivers. Oscar hits a ground ball out towards second base. A high hopper to Doug Griffin in a close play at first base. Just gets him. Well, that ball really was close at first as the boomer had a stretch. Oscar Gamble, 0 for 3. Play goes four to three if you're keeping score, and that's something I'm learning in the last couple of months. Here's a young man having a good day, got a couple of base hits. Sonner home, struck out his last time up, made a couple of fine plays. There's a fastball, it's the inside corner, strike one. Shadows all over the field now, especially in the light towers around second base and third. A one strike pitch, another fastball taken by Sonner home, strike two. Feel not too deep. Straight away in center is Evans. Deep at third is Hobson. We're in the bottom of the eighth. White Sox lead five to two. One away. There's a pitch low and he falls it off. And the count remains 0 and 2. Red Sox worried about their starting pitchers. They got Jenkins, Tion. Cleveland and Wise. In the bullpen, they have House, Campbell. Campbell lost his first two relief jobs. There's a guy that got a million and a half dollars and hasn't won yet. Will it be ready? He shakes his head. Now he fires. There's a pitch hit off the shoe of Sauter home, and he shakes his left foot. Kind of hurts a little bit. Not too cold today, though. The temperature has been around 75 or 80. Or the field is in just beautiful condition. White Sox and Red Sox play here again tomorrow. Same time. We'll be on the air at 1 o'clock. There's a sidearm pitch. Ground ball out towards third. Hobson with a good play. Fires over to first as he goes to his left and gloves it. He had a tough play to make, and he certainly did. On Sider home, and the play goes 5-3. to three. Things moving right along here. I'd like to see us get another base hit if we can, get some runs. Ted Lemon, young man, got a double his first time up and drove in a run. Single in the third. And fly to left. He's two for three now. Big right-hander delivers on the outside corner. He's all arms and legs and tough to pick up. Ted Ryan, arms and legs and he's tough to pick up. Two outs. Bottom of the eighth inning. White Sox leading. Willoughby on the mound, breaking ball in the dirt. Montgomery doing a good job behind the plate in place of Fisk. Fisk out with an injury on a run down. He hurt his neck in Boston. The 1-1 delivery. There's a pitch that jams him and he follows it back behind the plate. One ball and two strikes. Tion pitched yesterday against Northeastern, a college in Boston, an exhibition game. They had to pitch him there because if they pitched him here today, then Jenkins wouldn't have pitched for 10 days, and he will pitch tomorrow against Bart Johnson. Jenkins, one of the all-time favorites here in Chicago, still can pitch. 
One two delivery. There's a curveball that's one out of foul behind the plate. The count remains at one and two. No score in the ninth inning against Baltimore against Milwaukee. Good pitchers going in that game. It's Bill Travers against Jim Palmer, so I don't know if they're still in the game or not, but apparently they are. They held, held them all off. Palmer's lost his first game 2 to 1 against Texas. They just seem to get him any runs yet. Will it be ready? He sidearms him, breaking ball low in the dirt. Montgomery digs it out of there. I don't like to watch a major league catcher with class who doesn't one hand everything and uses those two hands and blocks that ball in front of him. The 2 2 pitch. There's a ground ball to third. Hops it on the big hop. He'll flip it over to first. Oh, it's in the runner. Just gets him as the boomer had to go off the bag to make the play. And without any trouble, just tagged him out. He wasn't going to run into him, I'll tell you that. Lemon tried to slide away from him. So it's 1-2-3 in the eighth inning. And the score after eight full innings of play is the White Sox 5, the Red Sox 2. Pardon me, sir. I want to tell you about something new and exciting. Go ahead. But you got to promise you won't laugh. I promise. You sure? And lots of people laugh when I tell them. Hey, I'm not going to laugh. Good. I want to tell you about a great new soup. New Super Soup. So that's funny. New Super Soup is made with crispy, fresh vegetables and hearty pieces of steer beef or generous amounts of clams. And there are eight different kinds. You think that's funny? you got a weird sense of humor. Mm-hmm. And would you believe that New Super Soup is found only at Dunkin' Donuts? Dunkin' Donuts? Soup? <laughs> hey, does it have a hole in it? <laughs> what, can you dunk it? And right now, you can get your favorite Dunkin' Donut, coffee, bread, butter, and a hearty bowl of new homestyle Super Soup with free refill for just 99 cents at participating Dunkin' Donut shops. Here, try some. Hey, it's crunchy and fresh. It's really great. What do you think? All that for 99 cents? There's nothing to laugh about. New Super Soup, only at Dunkin' Donuts. Jimmy Pearsall back at Comiskey Park with the White Sox leading by three in the top of the ninth inning. Hamilton in relief of Ken Brett, who did a super job. And he'll face Evans, the center fielder for the Red Sox. Evans 0 for 3 in the day and got an RBI when he grounded the short and drove in Yashimsky. Jim Dwight Evans last season was 341 against White Sox pitching, so he's always done well against the Sox. Hamilton ready. There's a pitch hit out in front of the plate. A little tough for the hitter up there right now, picking up the Picture with that shadow all over the mound. The light tower you can see between short and second. Kind of getting a little better in right field, but I'd much rather not see the ball go out to right field because it's really sunny out there. Coaching at third, Eddie Yost. Great third baseman. For one strike delivery. Boy, he almost hit him too. Right underneath his waist. The count's even in one and one. We've been talking about golden gloves. We talked about Jim Spencer and George Scott, and Dwight Evans got one last year. Finally, he's been deserving one for several years, in my opinion. He's quite a good outfielder. This pitch is swung on by Evans, and he fouls it off the catcher's glove. The count goes to one and two. You just heard that, maybe, folks. The attendance today was 34,612. Nice crowd for opening day. And the pitch is a breaking ball outside. And Hamilton trying to pick away now when he got two strikes. The infield is deep. Sauter home at third. Bannister is short. There's a fastball. Foul off. And this young guy up at that plate likes that hummer. We got, we got bullpen activity. Two right-handers, Del Canton and Legro. Nobody warming up down the right field line for the Red Sox. On deck, Butch Hobson. We got the bottom part of the order if we could just... Get this lead guy. You like to get that number one hitter. Hamilton shakes off his sign. Hessian behind the plate. Oh boy, he wanted that pitch. Joe, boy, everybody in the park. Call somebody out down there, dummy. Boy, we're at home. <laughs> Three balls and two strikes. The pitch. Ground ball, third base, and my mother thanks you. One out. Catcher. When that catcher, when that catcher wants that pitch as bad as Jim did, I know it's a strike. You know what happens sometimes? Some of 
umpires who are half been calling guys out on strikes or anybody being striked out. We haven't had too many strikeouts today. No, in fact, uh, just Bruce one. Hobson. He's all for. Th- he's he's all, he's all for three. Breaking ball low. Well, I don't like to see a pitcher right then come in with a breaking ball. You got a three-run lead. You got a guy getting one of base on balls. You throw a breaking ball. That's not second guess. But I like to see him throw that homer down the pipe. <laughs> uh, now he's behind with that fastball. Two balls and no strikes. You got to get on top of these guys. Especially you can't let these outs get away. These these hitters that are you know they're in the big leagues, but these are the kind of guys he won't be swinging. Right down the middle, call strike. That's what you asked for. That's right. I want I want strikes. If you, if you get beat, I don't want base on balls. You Two probably one strike. Top of the ninth, we're leading. There's a pitch just misses outside. Three to three and one. Top of the ninth inning, White Sox leading five two. Two outs away from winning this opener. The three one pitch. Steve Reich on the inside corner. He just got it. So Hamilton has a chance now to get out of this and bang. Balls are behind the plate. Took a little off that pitch, too. Jim, you'll probably remember that in spring training, Butch Hobson had a very hot streak. It was like 18 games that he had hit in safely. I think it was more like 10, actually. But anyway, a lot, long number of games, large number of games. And that's one of the reasons Rico Petroselli isn't here anymore. 3 pitch, fly ball right field. Boy, look at this change. You can't see it. He got it. I don't want to tell you right now. There's a ball that was curving towards the line. Hit off his fist. Not too deep. He goes over to the line. He can't see it too good. Now he stumbles a little bit. The wind takes it back to his right, and he caught it. I mean, I don't want to get excited about a great play. That was not a great play. It was just a sensation. <laughs> you know, there have been some people who seem to be somewhat concerned about his fielding, and I cannot imagine it. He looked super today. It's not right. his fault he didn't have his shoes on. He was uh, fooled by the sun and then came back to make a great play. I don't think there's anything Bob wrong with it. Bob Montgomery to hit her. There's that strike right down the pipe. So Hamlin jumps right on the head of Montgomery. Two outs. Big hole down that left field line. Over towards right center is Lemon. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball. Not too much of a pitch. He let it go too soon, and it just carried high. One ball and one strike. One out away for winning the opener. 34,612 fans. Thank you very much. There's a changeup, and he missed it. Now the count goes to one ball and two strikes. Still action in the bullpen. Row and Del Kent, two guys that we got late in the spring. And they are real fine gentlemen and awfully big, too. They're tall fellows, stand about six feet four. Order standing in the hole at, short, at uh, second base. The one two delivery. Breaking ball, slow roller. Hamilton's going to get it? No, he can't. He's going to try to get it. He can't. I'll tell you one thing. That went to his left. He hit off the end of the bat. He stumbled a little bit, couldn't come up with it. And a real slow runner, Montgomery beat it out. So there's a bad break for us as Montgomery gets a base hit in the infield. Uh, something interesting just came on the ticker tape. The largest crowd to see a Brewers game ever, 55,120. You know, the Brewers won two out of three from the Yankees in their first series this year, and those folks in Milwaukee are plenty excited about their team. Really? You can have the rest of the information. Really? I just want the, the boomer. The boomer's not there anymore. I didn't say me. I oh. the rest of them. Pinch hitter Carlton Fisk, who's not playing today in the ball game against Cleveland on a rundown. Well, they had 25 runs in that ball game. He got caught in a rundown on the second base for Cleveland, tagged him high in the neck and gave him a kind of a bruise, and they thought they better keep him out of the lineup. But now he's going to pinch hit against left hander Hamilton. This guy hit 24 home runs the year before last. Experienced catcher. A lot of poise. And they'll hit the ball at the middle, too. Montgomery on first. There's a pitch. This is inside. Two outs. Top of the ninth inning. White Sox leading 5-2. to two. All the hits are even now. 11 apiece. Red Sox have made an error. Big hole between short and third. Hamilton delivers. Fly ball. Out towards left center field. In comes Lemon. Out goes Bannister. In comes Gar. He got it! What a catch as he goes in front. Two. 
And you know, it's, it's kind of an exciting day here at Comiskey Park. We lost some ball games up in Toronto that I thought that with any hitting, we'd be all right. We'll be right back after this message. guy who spends more time getting your power mower started than you do cutting your lawn? Well, then here's a tip for you. Try replacing your worn spark plug with a fresh champion plug. A fresh champion plug alone can give you more power mower, easier starts all summer long, and give you more time for all those fun things that summer's really for. Remember, the fresher your plug, the easier your starts. So fill her up with champions. One at five to two on a fine pitching performance by Ken Brett. He goes seven and two thirds innings and did a whale of a job. Mayor, what do you think about this ball game? Well, I tell you, it was a great way to start the season. I think we had some good hitting. It was nice to see Chad Lemon finally break in and get a couple of good hits. He had two for the day. And George Order with several RBIs. I think the hitting generally was very good. And Ken Brett, for the first time maybe this season, was able to hold the runs. And so it looked like a good performance. Real good performance, got base hits early, uh, seemed to play outstanding defense, Soder home doing a job. Our outfielders having problems with making the catches because of the sun. Uh, i got to believe that we are going to be better than a lot of people think. I think this is great to see Hamilton come in. We need him to come in again to side out. Uh, we've got other guys in that bullpen that can do the job. Mark Johnson tomorrow, we look for him. I think he's going to do a good job. He can throw that ball yet, and he didn't have much of a spring. Maybe it'll be a good ball game for him tomorrow. Looks like a good one, and uh, the White Sox now have uh, won another one, and the Red Sox have yet to win a game this season, so the White Sox want to keep that streak going tomorrow. Okay, we're at 500, and the White Sox win it 5-2. to two. Five runs on 11 hits and no errors. The Red Sox, two runs on 11 hits and one error. Chicago White Sox baseball brought to you today by Chevrolet Trucks, trucks that are built to stay tough, by Champion Spark Plug Company, who reminds you that there is... ...chat that the president gave. Uh, his, his aides wanted him to do it from the private family quarters upstairs at the White House. He absolutely refused. And he said, next, you'll want me to have it telecast from my bathroom. <laughs> we'll tune that one in, I guess. Reporter Tom Martin out of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Thank you. In the last few years, the cost of electricity has risen faster than most other items on the cost of living index. Utility companies say the increase is mostly due to the quadrupling of fuel prices since the Arab oil embargo of 1973 and 74. As a matter of fact, fuel prices increased so often and so fast since then that 43 state utility commissions have allowed utilities to pass fuel costs on automatically through fuel adjustment clauses. But new revelations indicate that utilities have been using the fuel adjustment clause to pass many other charges on to consumers without regulatory oversight or even knowledge. NPR's Barbara Newman has the story. Information.